Chapter 24 Joash was seven years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem forty years. His mother was Zebiah from Beersheba. Joash did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight throughout the lifetime of Jehoiada the priest. Jehoiada chose two wives for Joash, and he had sons and daughters. Some time later, Joash decided to repair and restore the temple of the Lord. He summoned the priests and Levites and gave them these instructions. Go at once to all the towns of Judah and collect the required annual offerings so that we can repair the temple of your God. Do not delay. But the Levites did not act right away. So the king called for Jehoiada the high priest and asked him, Why haven't you demanded that the Levites go out and collect the temple taxes from the towns of Judah and from Jerusalem? Moses, the servant of the Lord, levied this tax on the community of Israel in order to maintain the tabernacle of the covenant. Over the years, the followers of wicked Athaliah had broken into the temple of God, and they had used all the dedicated things from the temple of the Lord to worship the images of Baal. So now Joash gave instructions for a chest to be made and set outside the gate leading to the temple of the Lord. Then a proclamation was sent throughout Judah and Jerusalem, telling the people to bring to the Lord the tax that Moses, the servant of God, had required of the Israelites in the wilderness. This pleased all the leaders and the people, and they gladly brought their money and filled the chest with it. Whenever the chest became full, the Levites carried it to the king's officials. Then the court secretary and an officer of the high priest counted the money and took the chest back to the temple again. This went on day after day, and a large amount of money was collected. The king and Jehoiada gave the money to the construction supervisors who hired masons and carpenters to restore the temple of the Lord. They also hired metal workers who made articles of iron and bronze for the Lord's temple. So the men in charge of the renovation worked hard, and they made steady progress. They restored the temple of God according to its original design and strengthened it. When all the repairs were finished, they brought the remaining money to the king and Jehoiada. It was used to make utensils for the temple of the Lord, utensils for worship services and for burnt offerings, including ladles and other vessels made of gold and silver. And the burnt offerings were sacrificed continually in the temple of the Lord during the lifetime of Jehoiada the priest. Jehoiada lived to a very old age, finally dying at 130. He was buried among the kings in the city of David because he had done so much good in Israel for God and his temple. But after Jehoiada's death, the leaders of Judah came and bowed before King Joash and persuaded the king to listen to their advice. They decided to abandon the temple of the Lord, the God of their ancestors, and they worshipped Asherah poles and idols instead. Then the anger of God burned against Judah and Jerusalem because of their sin. The Lord sent prophets to bring them back to him, but the people would not listen. Then the Spirit of God came upon Zechariah, son of Jehoiada the priest. He stood before the people and said, This is what God says. Why do you disobey the Lord's command so that you cannot prosper? You have abandoned the Lord, and now he has abandoned you. Then the leaders plotted to kill Zechariah, and by order of King Joash himself they stoned him to death in the courtyard of the Lord's temple. That was how King Joash repaid Jehoiada for his love and loyalty, by killing his son. Zechariah's last words as he died were, May the Lord see what they are doing and hold them accountable. At the beginning of the year the Aramean army marched against Joash. They invaded Judah and Jerusalem and killed all the leaders of the nation. Then they sent all the plunder back to their king in Damascus. Although the Arameans attacked with only a small army, the Lord helped them conquer the much larger army of Judah. The people of Judah had abandoned the Lord, the God of their ancestors, so judgment was executed against Joash. The Arameans withdrew, leaving Joash severely wounded. But his own officials decided to kill him for murdering the son of Jehoiada the priest. They assassinated him as he lay in bed. Then he was buried in the city of David, but not in the royal cemetery. The assassins were Josabad, the son of an Ammonite woman named Shimeath, and Jehozabad, the son of a Moabite woman named Shomer. The complete story about the sons of Joash, the prophecies about him, 
and the record of his restoration of the temple of God are written in the commentary on the book of the kings. When Joash died, his son Amaziah became the next king.